Hey guys, I recently took a family trip up to the Pacific Northwest, and like most of my family trips, I spent some time looking for bees. So I was really intrigued by the fact that the bees are active even right on the coast, like right next to the water. It was pretty neat, even when it was cloudy and overcast. The beaches there are awesome. The forest comes right down to the beach, lots of driftwood and cooler rocks along the shore. Some of the first bees I was seeing were bees like this. This is a bumblebee called Bombus vosnesenskii. Well, I think this one's Bombus vosnesenskii. There's actually two species that look really similar, Bombus vosnesenskii and Bombus caliginosus. It's really hard to tell them apart, and in fact, the only way to be positive is looking at the genitalia of the males. So anyway, in some of the grassy areas near where we were staying, I started seeing these little holes in the ground. This is actually a bee nest. I waited around for a little while and saw the bee that lives in this nest. This is a sweat bee in the genus Helictus. Several of these kinds of bees are social in some circumstances, so this might have been a social nest. Pretty fun to watch. One of my favorite flowers up there was the foxglove. Super pretty flowers. I saw a lot of bumblebees in them, mostly male bumblebees. It was interesting because all along this trip, I was mostly seeing male bumblebees. Now this tells me that the, the life cycle of the bumblebee hive nearing the end of its life. Um, it could be because of the heat or because of the drought or a mixture of the two. We did see several different kinds of bumblebees. We saw Bombus mixtus, Bombus flavifrons, mi mixtus males and females, also Bombus melanopygus females, Flavidus males, Vandykii males, and Flavifrons females. We also did a lot of hiking up there, a lot of the hiking along the coasts and these beautiful forests, very different from Utah from where I'm from. It was really fun just to see lots of different kinds of plants and animals. This is called a ghost plant, really cool plant. Uh, I used to think it was parasitic, but doing a little bit more reading, they actually have a relationship with some fungi that allows them to feed off of the, the nutrients from surrounding plants. We also saw some of these millipedes. This is a yellow spotted millipede. Some of these species actually produce cyanide to deter predation. Of course, we saw lots of banana slugs. And I didn't know this before, but there's multiple species of banana slugs. There's ones like this with the, the dark spots. There's also some that are all yellow, yellowish green, different species there. We also saw these big black slugs and I wasn't sure what they were. I looked it up and really they're called black slugs. This is an invasive species from Europe but we saw several of them in the forests, especially in the moist areas. When we got to some of the clearings, like where there was former clear cuts, we started seeing more bees. Like this Bombus vosnesenskii, we actually stopped for lunch and started seeing some of these vosnesenskii flying around this little wood pile. This is like a debris pile from um, some past logging efforts. We looked more closely and so they were actually coming out of the ground. And so I think this is actually uh, the entrance of a bumblebee nest. I really wanted to expose it so I could show you what a bumblebee nest looks like, but I didn't want to disturb it. But bumblebees nest underground, often in abandoned rodent burrows or other hollowed out cavities. And so this old uh, debris pile provides us a, a really great spot for them to nest in. It was really cool to see. So like I said, these forests are beautiful. We did hiking along the coast, but then we went farther inland and did some hiking in Olympic National Park. Uh, we went up this, these big switchbacks, saw lots of cool wildflowers up in the alpine areas. This is a tiger lily, and I didn't see any bees on it, but I saw this cool hoverfly feeding on it. We also saw some beetles on the, the flowers. While I'm hiking, I often look at the ground, and it's surprising how many bees you can see sunning themselves on the ground or on flowers or leaves, like this mining bee. Uh, we saw polyester bees. We saw more bumblebees. We saw mason bees. Lots of bees in these alpine um, meadow areas, really fun to look through. When I'm hiking, I often hear cicadas, but I was excited that I actually spotted this cicada. So I took a little video of it. When we got to the top of the switchbacks, we're looking north here, kind of northeast. You can see the, the ocean down there in the distance, just on the other side of that little inlet is Canada. And I saw these bees foraging around here. At first I thought they were bumblebees, because they kind of looked hairy and bumblebee-like, but if you look closely at the way that this bee is foraging, it puts its head down into the flower and sticks its abdomen up in the air. And you can see on the underside of the abdomen, there are orange um, scopal hairs. This is where they collect the pollen. And this tells me that this is a leaf cutter bee. Very cool bee. Throughout all of this hiking and looking for bees, I saw lots of cool things, but one thing I hadn't seen to this point was a rare bumblebee called the Western bumblebee, Bombus occidentalis. I looked all over the hills and mountains and didn't find it until I was in this city park in Port Angeles, and I saw this 
Bombus occidentalis foraging on some flowers. I followed it around. It's a really cool bumblebee. Unlike Bombus vosnesenskii or colliginosus, Bombus occidentalis doesn't have yellow on the abdomen. It has a white tip to the abdomen. So prior to the 1990s, Bombus occidentalis was one of the most common bees encountered in the Pacific Northwest. In the last 30 years, it has become really, really rare. It is one of the bees that various conservation organizations are petitioning the federal government to list as an endangered species. So I was really excited to be able to see this female, even just in a city park in Port Angeles. So anyway, it was a fun trip. Like most of my family trips, we spend a lot of time looking for bees and exploring and doing fun things. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll post some more of my summer trips in a couple weeks.